you've got questions. Well, we have the man to answer those questions, Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Good to be with you. Well, good to be. Good to have you here, Jeffrey. I've got a question about a topic that um, I've written about, but goodness knows I'd be hard pressed to explain it. It's the Corporate Transparency Act, which apparently places new compliance requirements on millions of U.S. companies, including right. many small businesses. And these filings must be completed, I understand, by January 1, 2025 with stiff penalties for non-compliance. What do I need to know about that? Well, I think that's the first thing, right? <laughs> We're coming up on a deadline here really soon. This was for existing businesses. There's sort of a phased in approach to what if your business was in place before 2024? What if your business was started in 2024? What if it started after 2024? But for previously existing businesses, that deadline of the end of this year is fast approaching. And what people need to know is, uh, effectively, this is designed as a, a way to get additional information about who really owns something, right? That's why we call it the beneficial ownership rules because it's who is actually benefiting from this ownership. So, you know, you probably heard Bob over the years, like, well, this company is actually owned by this company, which is owned really by this LLC, which is actually owned by this company, also part of this partnership. And, can, you know, like it goes on and on and on and on. At the end of the day, you're like, Wait a second, who really owns this? Well, that's what our, uh, our federal government would like to know. They'd like to know that to help with things like anti-money laundering, et cetera. And so the Corporate Transparency Act is designed to get to the heart of that by saying, who has control over an organization? And that has to be reported, again, for those folks who have an existing business by the end of this year. Now, that control can be in terms of either ownership so you own a certain amount of uh, the, the actual company, you, you, know, you have an economic interest, or it could be that you are a key decision maker of that business. In either case, uh, the, uh, the federal government would like to know who you are with some basic information that will be kept in uh, what at least we're told is a very secure um, you know, system that everyone will not like it's not going to be a public database or anything like that this will be a private kind of offline system if you will that will be maintained for just these purposes right and and how onerous is it to complete this beneficial ownership interest document you know it really depends upon who you talk to and how complicated your business is right are we talking about just hey you started your you know s corporation it's just you as the owner you're the only employee you make all the decisions like all right you're the person, right? Like that's who everybody wants to know. Like it's you. Now, when you get into larger companies with officers and, oh, actually these shares are owned by a trust, which is all, like, now it can get much more complicated. And this is where people are starting to, you know, reach out to attorneys for compliance in this area, et cetera. Uh, it, it can be, uh, it, it can be, you know, to your point, quite confusing. And, and these are new, right? These are new rules. And anytime there's new rules, even something that seems relatively simple, right? Like in my mind, for instance, Bob, when we went from a, an RMD starting age of age 70 and a half to an age of 72 a few years ago, that was easy because everybody knows when they turn 72, right? No one really yeah. pays attention to when they turn seven and a half other than for this really silly retirement rule. Yeah. So to me, that was like, wow, this is going to be a, a very easy thing. And yet, there were lots of mistakes. Why? Because it was new and everybody said, I didn't know, I didn't understand this. So there will be that sort of, um, you know, we'll, we'll go through that transition period, but we don't want you to be the one making the mistake because Bob, as you just talked about that, you know, that can lead to some pretty significant penalties. In a lot of cases, if this is sort of a um, benign mistake, if you will, it was an error. It might just be civil penalties. So it might just cost you some, you know, some dollars, mm -hmm. which isn't great, but where there's active intent to defraud or, you know, something along those lines, it can actually result not only in civil penalties, but in criminal prosecution as well. Yeah. And, and will this be a annual requirement that you file this or is it a once and done thing? Uh, sort of in the middle, right? Like you don't have to constantly be in there, but you do have to make sure that anytime there are changes, et cetera, that those changes are, uh, are, are, are uploaded, if you will, or reported in a timely manner. 
So for a lot of companies where that beneficial ownership does change hands on a you know somewhat frequent basis, there will have to be regular filings associated with this. Hmm. Uh, Jeffrey, so it, it may be required that owners have to file this. Um, it's not a requirement that people have to write us with questions, but it's certainly what? Uh, beneficial. <laughs> there you go. It's beneficial. And we'll be the owners of those questions and answer them appropriately. So if you'd like to have us answer your questions, give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing those questions in our inbox real soon.